In the Yorkshire Hills, a handful of dealers have assembled, keen to discover what might be arriving in the bidding room. <laughs> Our five experts include buyer of all things weird and wonderful, Ian. James, who has an eye for early 20th century pieces. Vintage interior lover, Estelle. Plus AD and Tash. They're ready to spend their cash, but whatever comes through the doors today is a complete surprise. First in are Samantha and her son Joshua, with something they hope will sit well with the dealers. My item is comfortable, it's classy, quirky, a great rare item. Not rare, it's legend. It's legend, not rare. Before the bidding begins, Samantha and Joshua are having their piece valued by Simon, who's been in the auction business for three decades. Hello, Joshua. Hi. Hello, Samantha. Hiya. You're very smartly dressed. Have we come with someone special? Doctor Who. Doctor Who! <laughs> oh, my heavens. So, Joshua, is this your chair? Yes. Mm -hmm. It was his story time chair. It was his story time chair? Mm hmm Fantastic. OK. Where did Joshua um, find this chair? My husband got given it as payment ten years ago for doing a friend a favour. He had a lot of cinema memorabilia. Right, right. <laughs> so he gave him it as payment rather than the money. <laughs> Fantastic. And where's it been sitting, the chair? His bedroom. Really? <laughs> so, Joshua, you decided to move on from the chair, have you? Yes. Oh, OK. Let's ask Simon, who knows all about cinema chairs. He's an expert, in fact. I love the story time chair. Yeah. Well, yeah. Great, great repurpose that for it, isn't it? Cast iron base, Nigel, as we'd expect, wouldn't we? Yeah. And, and that decoration, that's classic art deco, isn't it? Yeah. Almost like a sort of a sunburst, isn't it? And then, of course, the classic pull-down seat, as we'd expect. I'd say probably later upholstered. I'm wondering whether this perhaps was a standalone. Yes. With it having the pattern on both sides, so maybe for a usher or somebody who uh, worked at yes. the cinema. Yes, yes. I can't see any foundry or maker's name on it. It looks to me possibly French, which a lot of them were. It's probably late 1920s, 1930, round about that sort of date, which is where I think it is. But a great thing. Do people uh, collect this sort of thing? Well, they do. I can see it. <laughs> it's one of those uh, classic man cave things, yeah. isn't it, really? Perhaps even have it as a gaming chair or something like that. If you don't, I'm just going to try it out. Why see not? if I can sit in it and see how comfortable it is. I want you to tip over. Oh, yes. Very nice. I like it. Yes. Joshua, that was a good, good thing to have stories told sitting in that chair, wasn't it? <laughs> so, Joshua, now is the time to ask that very important question. Simon, how much is it worth? Ooh. I think, Joshua, you've got a great little item to take next door. I think all the dealers will really want to buy it off you. Um, That's good. You've got to push them hard, though, so you... Tell them all the history about it. And I think, do you know what? I'm going to say you're going to get 100 to 150 pounds. <laughs> Josh's face lit up. No, he didn't. Did, did. So, Josh, tell me, what are you going to do with 100 to 150 pounds? Save so up to go to Wales. There's a lot of Doctor Who locations yeah, yeah. in Wales. Of course there are. We're going to have a recap of all the points. So you can get the maximum price for this. So remember, it's Art Deco period, Art Deco. which is late 1920s, 1930s. Cast iron base. We think it might be French. Point out this lovely Art Deco design on the ends. That's classic of the period. If they ask about the upholstery, say you think it might be later, it doesn't really matter, to be honest. And I'm sure, Joshua, you'll be able to push them to the limit. Yes. OK, stick to your guns. Make them go up and up and up. Thank you very much for bringing it in. I think it's a wonderful item. I wouldn't mind it myself. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Simon valued the chair at 100 to 150 pound. So I'm hoping Joshua has some tricks up his sleeves to get the bidders bid in. It's time for Samantha and Joshua to take on the dealers, including French furniture fan AD and Tash, who loves well designed but functional pieces. Hello, guys. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? How are you? Good. What's your names? Joshua. I'm Sam. I'm Mum. You look a really cool dude. Yeah. Doctor Who. 
Oh. oh. <laughs> Very well done. Joshua, do you want to reveal what you've brought in today? Oh, oh, thanks, Joshua. <laughs> well, is that a cinema chair? It is a cinema chair, yeah. That isn't Whoa. just one cinema chair, is it? That is sweet. It's beautiful Art Deco, isn't it? <sighs> yeah, so it's obviously a cinema-related um, chair. Well, actually, Simon thought it might have been some usher's chair, you know, because the pattern on oh. is on the both sides right. rather okay, than yeah. just... The one side or none at all if it was yeah, in a yeah, row. Absolutely, yeah. So I'm thinking it's sort of 1930s, is that right? Uh, Simon says it was, yeah. Yeah. So Joshua, what have you been using this chair for in your room? Story time. Oh, oh nice. story time chair. Wow, I love that. I do like this colour. It is a velour. Yellow is a very on-trend colour at the moment. That is really low, That's, isn't it? It's really, yeah, it's really lovely, actually. It is very low. Full points for that. It's, it is a cool thing. It's very heavy. Very heavy. <laughs> very heavy. But I do like it. Did Simon say where it could have originated from? He said France. Yeah, uh, 100%. Made, absolutely. Made in France. No. Yeah, absolutely French. Yeah, 100%. No. I knew as soon as, it, as soon as it come in, I knew it was French. Of course you did. So, Joshua, what do you really love about this chair? Real Sell it to me. It's real comfortable. It's really comfortable. You mm. spent many hours in that chair, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think we should start the bidding. The Art Deco cinema chair has been valued at 100 to 150 pounds. But with lots of interest in the room, has Joshua just got the ticket to push for more? Do we start at 50? Shall we? Yeah. 50 pounds! I'll start <laughs> you at 50 quid. I'll go 60. 100. 110. Ooh, 120. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> 130. 140. 150. 160. 170. 180. 190. Oh. Got us all working now, Josh. 200 quid. Hmm. I mean, it is unusual with the double ends. Met my limit. I'm going to say I'm out. Sorry. I'm, I'm not going to do more than 200, I'm afraid. Hmm. 210. I'm going to say I'm out at 210. Would you be happier at 220? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm out there. Sorry. What do you reckon? <laughs> no. He <laughs> said so, no. He's a hard oh, man to me. deal with, isn't he? 250. I'll do 250, Joshua. Oh. <gasps> oh. We ain't going to do any more. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come back to you in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, I'll just go one more at 260. Oh, I don't want to go anymore. No, he's playing his little face, little face. <laughs> Do you see that face there? <laughs> right, Joshua, at 270 with me. We got a deal, or do you think Ian will go another? I don't think he will. I don't think he's got the bottle to do it. I am out, but I tell you what, if AD does buy it, it'll go to a very good home. He will look after it. What do you reckon? Yeah, deal. Yeah. Yay! Oh, shout to you. Thank you very I much. I very nearly jumped in for I really love it. it. Went fantastic, uh, better than expected. Joshua got him to go quite a bit higher, didn't you? Yep. What did Simon value this at? Uh, 100 to 150. Are you happy with that sale, Joshua? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> of course. It was only fair he sold it. I'm happy it's going to a good home. Okay, both. Thanks very much for coming in. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank yeah, you very much. Have a lovely Thank time. You. Bye. Bye. Oh, it's kind of, it's, I think it's more appealing than one if you had two stuck together, isn't it? Next to arrive is Karen, with some treasured possessions she's hoping will appeal to the dealer's softer side. The items I've brought along today are very collectible, German, and they're adorable. <laughs> I really love the items and I hope the dealers do too. I'm in love already because they're poodles. <laughs> and as you know, Simon, 
we have a poodle, mm. and she's black, and so here we go. Yeah. I'm a terrible sucker. <laughs> yep, yep. Karen, welcome to the bidding room. Hello. You brought something gorgeous in. Do you have poodles? I don't know. Oh, you have Actually, these, though. But I do have those. Yes. <laughs> you mind my asking how much you paid? It was just under £100. Just under £100? Yeah, yes, yes. OK. So that's about all you know about them? Yes. Okay, um, well, apart from them being stiff. Yeah. Um, and I believe they're um, from the 1950s, as far as I'm aware. OK. They're yeah. one of the most intelligent dogs around. Yes. Very loyal, yeah. very good with children, yeah. very good with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking at uh, our largest poodle here, Karen, because yes. we've got what we all want to see, of course, the button. Yes. Which is uh, synonymous with stife. And, of course, basically, they introduced the button as a, as a copyright. And the Poodle was one of Stife's sort of legacy breeds, if you like. I mean, their first catalogue was 1890-something, early 1890s, and the Poodles were in it. Right. Even then, you know, Stife were producing Poodles. Nicely jointed legs, all four legs, and, of course, we got a bit of a rotating head as well. So, so very nice. We've got three black Poodles and then what we call a blonde. Yep. Um, on the end there as well. They're all stive? Um, well, my only concern is that we, I, I can, can see a button and label in the big one, but there doesn't appear to be any buttons no. at all in the other three. I mean, style-wise, construction-wise, they look identical. Yeah. So they could well be. So they really are collectible, aren't they? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. No, there's, you know, there's, there's no, no doubt about no that. No doubt about that. So, Karen, now you can ask that burning question. How much are they worth? Mm. <laughs> I think, you, even without the buttons on the little ones, I think you've still got a really nice group. I'm sort of totting it up in my head. I, I, I can easily see 150 to 200 pounds there, you know, so... There will be profit. Very good. <laughs> there will be profit. Excellent. So the bullet points, really, for, for Karen... Focus on the big one, mm -hmm. because he's got the button. Mm -hmm. And I think he, he's, he's going to help sell the rest, shall we say. Yes. But, you know, play on Stife. You know, the name in soft toys. Uh, collectability, condition is all good. Mm -hmm. And just push them to AD. Very best of luck in the dealer's room. Thank you very much. I think that you'll do really well. Yes, hopefully. So, uh, luck is on your side. Yes. Have a good time. Thanks for coming in. Thank you very much. Nice to meet Thank you. you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Simon valued the poodles between 150 and 200 pounds. My tactic going into the bidding room is to have a poker face, so hopefully that will get the bids going up a bit. Hi. Hello. Hello. And what is your name? Karen. Hello, Hello Karen. Karen. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Jolly good. These are good fun. There are a little family of poodles. The large uh, black poodle has a stife button in his or her ear. Why are you getting rid of them? Unfortunately, um, I have to because I'm downsizing. So um, oh, I've got us. yes, I've got quite a collection of, of things that I need to sell. Are so, they causing a nuisance then? Are they like no, you know napping no. about and you know oh, they need loads of very feeding. Well, very well behaved. Then, that's what you're <laughs> very saying. Very well behaved. So you may know. I mean, I I collect. Um, bears. And yes, the button is in his right ear. So definitely Stife, and so is the little one. Um, everything's the same, from the collar to the tongue to the eyes. So, I mean, they are, you know, even Genuine. though they're not yes. um, stamped up, they're 100% Stife. They are very, 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 very beautiful. Yeah. And I love the fact that they have been, they've been played with, because they're quite worn in places, aren't they? I don't like things when they're pristine. Oh, yes. So, you know, any toys, anything I buy... Yes. Um, I mean, I, I buy bears with legs and they're virtually hanging off, and yes. Uh, yes. these aren't. These are in lovely yes. condition. How would your teddy bears feel, um, feel about these poodles intruding on their territory? I think they'd take them in quite well, really, you mm. know? I mean, they'd feel like they're protected when there's nobody in the house. Mm. Like guard poodles? Like little guard poodles, yeah. <laughs> guard poodles. <laughs> I'm taking a stab, because I say I don't normally buy poodles, but I'm guessing they are... I'm going to date them. I'm guessing they're 40s. They are absolutely delightful. OK, well, let's crack on with the bidding now, guys. The set of poodles, thought to date from the mid-20th century, are valued at £150 to £200. But will any of the dealers buy at that price? I'll start the bidding at £80. 
I'll go 90. Unfortunately, no. That's far too low, I'm afraid. I'll go 100. Uh, they are in excellent condition for how old they are. 100 seems quite cheap, but I don't want to bid up against someone who probably needs to buy them. So I'm going to be out. I'm going to toodle off, I'm sorry. 120, is that...? It's getting there slowly, very slowly. <laughs> I'm out. out. Yeah, thank you. So it's no. just Tash then. I'm not going to be bidding anymore, I'm afraid. It's not my area. I like the little beige one, but. Mm -hmm. Come on, Karen, Karen, Karen. Where have we got to be? What price have you got in your head? You know they're going to a good home. They're not going to be resold. 120 is probably what I would hope for for the large poodle. Wow. I'll throw you in one more bid. I'll go to 180. And that's more than I wanted to pay. If I ever did sell them, I would sell them to somebody that was going to keep, keep them and look them. after them. Yes. Sounds fair. Yes, it does. Yes. yes. I'm yes. happy with that. Fantastic. Right, thank, you. thank you very much indeed. <laughs> thank you. So Karen sells to AD for £180. That's 30 over Expert Simon's lower valuation. Karen, absolutely fantastic items. You knew I was going to buy them. I'll give them a good home, I promise you. Thank you very much for bringing them in. Lovely to meet you. And bye! Thank you. <laughs> bye. bye, darling. Bye. Bye. Thank you. bye. I've really enjoyed it. It's been fascinating and uh, it's been a really good experience. I'm really glad that the poodles have gone to AD because he, he clearly loved them. And it also means another addition to AD's extensive toy collection. Come on, what's the story with the teddies? I lost him. He was my first teddy and I lost him for 40 years. And my mum and dad gave me back for Christmas about five years ago. I was in a shop and I bought him and he was on a reject tin. Oh. And that was it. And now I've got hundreds. In our house, they're all sitting on the stairs. Then as you go across the landing, they're all in the landing. Then I've got probably 60 next to my bed. How do you get to your actual bed if you've got 60? Oh, no, no, I've got, a, I've, got a, I've got a proper little walkway to, to the bed. Then I've probably got <laughs> 20 or 30 at work that keep looking after the office. Is there a word for, you know, being addicted to teddies? I don't think I'm addicted. No, just really not really. You've just got to fight your way to your bed to get through. <laughs> Third into our Yorkshire HQ is Tim, with something he hopes will fire up the dealers. The item brought in was brass. It's a very unusual shape and it had a domestic use. I think the dealers will like the item because it's unusual and it will test their knowledge. I've seen a few in my time. I bet you've seen a few. Yeah. They come around. Yeah, they do. You've got any ruffles that need to be <laughs> quaffed? Lovely condition, though, isn't it? Gorgeous. Let's get Tim in. Thanks for coming to the bidding room. Delighted. You're welcome. You bought some lovely little object here. <laughs> well, it's a goffering iron. Yep. And um, in the days when people would wear granddad shirts with collars, um, you would put a red hot poker into the iron and smooth the collar. I think I've seen a few in my time. They're yeah. rather wonderful, aren't they? Fantastic. Lovely example of a goffering iron, and you're, you're quite right with the with the purpose. Obviously, we'd have a heated poker, which would go in the top section there. This type was usually for detachable collars. Date-wise, I'd probably put this mid 1800s, 1850s, 60s, that kind of date. They are uh, uh, collectible, I'm sure. They all, you know, we always we always talk about sort of trends in the antique world, don't we? How mm. things are in fashion and they're not. But mm. goffering irons, for some reason, they've always stayed in. Have they? Why? I don't know. It's just one of those. One of those. Good things. news. It's good news. <laughs> it's because they're, they're they're so different. Yeah. Why don't you have a go at asking that question, Tim? Yes. Yeah, so, Simon, how much do you think it should fetch? Well. I mean, the early ones, the sort of 18th century, mid 18th century ones, can fetch many hundreds of pounds. Mm. I think my feeling on this one, Tim, is you should be looking at around the. I would think about 100 to 150. So if you have that sort of figure in mind, yeah. you won't be I, far. That's what I had in mind. Actually. Yeah, well, there we go. That's perfect. What will you do with that money, Tim? 
Well, I am a, a bell ringer at a local church, believe it or not, and we are launching a Ring a Bell Day to support cancer charities. Fantastic. So I want to use the money to buy lots of small bells we can resell. Fantastic. Nice to meet you. And very nice to meet you the too. The very, very best of luck. Thank you very much. And I think you'll do really well. Thanks. Bye. 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 I had a bell on my bike. <laughs> do you ring that? <laughs> I hope the gopher arm was worth around £100 and Simon thought between 100 and 150 I'd be pleased if we get that. I think I'm a reasonable salesman. I shan't get hot under the collar over the bidding. Hello. 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 And what's your name? I'm, I'm Tim. Hello, Hello Tim. Tim. Hello, Tim. Tim. Would you like to reveal what's underneath the cloth, please? I would. Oh. Exciting times. Du, 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 du. Oh. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> what on earth is it? Domestic item, Victorian times. Is this something to do with cigars? No. Now, I'm uh, setting the standards by wearing a shirt and a tie. Is it something that can be used today? Well, it could be, but unlikely. Would it help if we got up and held it? Feel free. Do I need...? It, I don't think it will help, though. No, it, it does... <laughs> hope it doesn't. So there's no movement in any of it. It's, it's rigid, is it's it? It's heavy. Very tactile. <laughs> is it brass? There is a... Simon and Nigel knew what it was straight away. Did they? Really? Well, they're very smart, aren't they? <laughs> Would you put something in there which heated something up? Correct. Oh, is it so to put a red hot, red hot poker in there. OK, oh. so you've got a poker in there. So it's for starching your collars? Yes, it's a goffering iron. Gotcha. Wow. A goffering iron, right. For the days, obviously, we have granddad shirts yeah. today, but you take yeah. the collar off and you would rub the collar over it to... Oh, iron of course, it. yes, of course. My partner specialises in French fabrics and we buy all the collars. And it's oh. always fascinated me because they're always flat. So I've always thought, well, how does that work? I've learned, I now know. Brilliant. Simple, but brilliant. What period did they put that at? Probably 1850s, perhaps. OK. So would it not have um, a part missing, then, the part to actually put the item in to heat up? Occasionally, they would have actually fitted pokers, but normally you just have a red-hot poker from the fire. It's very nice condition and... Uh, it's been very well polished. It has. How long have you had it again? An elderly neighbour uh, lady had lots of knick-knacks in her house and almost as a child it used to interest me just because of its shape and eventually she left it to me. So I've had it quite a long time, <laughs> So, should we start the bidding? The Goffring iron, thought to date back to the mid-1800s, is valued at 100 to £150. Pounds. But can Tim collar an even better price than that? I'm going to start the bidding at £50. Pounds. That's strong. Straight in there. Well, I think it's a fair bid. 60. 70. 75. 80. I won't be bidding, I'm afraid, on this one. It's just not my air expense. Something that Simon said is it, interestingly, these things just hold the value. Where things fluctuate, you'll guarantee that this will hold its value. £85, then. Think of all those French collars. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm out, I'm afraid. It's a good historical artefact. It's a sort of fascinating history piece. I think I'm... Because it's not French, I think I'm going to go out. I'll go 90. Think of those smart colours. 95. 110. Ooh, tactics. I do you want 20? 130. Oh. Last bid, 135. 135. No. Sure? Yeah. Oh, you surprised me there. Did I? Would you push it to 150? No. <laughs> I think I think that's enough for that. I'll go one I'll go 135. Are you sure? Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. Brilliant. Well done. I sold the Goffring iron to Ian. He paid £135, so that was halfway between the £100 and £150 at Simon's estimate. I think that was a fair price.
Tim, thank you so much, mate. That is, an, well, it's just a, a very interesting piece. We've never seen one, so you've, we've learned something, and it's great to have met you. Right. Thank, thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. thank you, all of you. Thanks. Bye. I'm going to spend the money on buying lots of small bells, which will be used on Ring a Bell Day, which is going to support cancer charities. It's just a great thing to look at, though, yeah, as well, isn't it? Is, everyone's yeah. going to go, what's that? Yeah, it's really cool. Next, Geraldine has a family heirloom. She's hoping the dealers will see is a real gem. My item is made of jade. And I've had it for a while. It's come down through the family, and I think it's time that somebody else should enjoy it. So, Simon, when you go quiet <laughs> and it gets a bit serious, it well, we, means something important arrives. We love quality, don't we, Nigel? I'm going to have a really close look at this in a minute. OK, right, I'll this? get Geraldine in. Hello, Geraldine. Hello, Nigel. Thank you for coming to the bidding room and bringing something that has made Simon go very quiet. Good Lord, I didn't realise that. Yes, well, can you tell me about what you brought in? It's a um, jade handheld dressing table mirror that uh, has come down through the family. One of my great aunts, uh, she uh, sort of mixed with the sort of aristocracy in Belgium. She had lots of very pretty things. And that's, that's the extent of what you know about it? Really? Uh, yes, except that um, we notice it's got a little um, Hong Kong stamp on the handle. Um glad you confirmed that, Geraldine, because that's why I was looking so closely for a mark. And you, you, you're absolutely right. I've, I can tiny, see it on there. It, it is really very, is very tiny, small. isn't it? But we've got a capital H and a capital K. That's right. In a, in a little uh, a box, a little cartouche mm. uh, for Hong Kong. That's quite right. Um, Date-wise, I'd probably put the piece late 19th century. I don't know oh, whether that's a tie in with the that? story. But they're what we call um, belt hook mirrors. Oh. Because the handles were basically originally belt hooks, hence the, the nick in there for the, the dragon's head, you may have noticed. So is that actually broken, Simon? No, Thank that's as, it's, as it should be, and um, no, that's absolutely fine. I love the carving of the back. I think that's absolutely gorgeous. And then the belt hook handle. Um, it's in a white metal. You know, fantastic quality. Now, um, silly question, but I'm going to ask it. Are they collectible? Well, you may have heard, Nigel, the Chinese market seems to have taken off in recent <laughs> it years. It certainly has. Anything <laughs> that comes through that is Chinese, it just goes... Woof. Shall I ask the question? Why don't you? Simon, what do you think it's worth? It is worth quite a bit of money, Geraldine, to be honest. And mm. if I had it in my auction room and you were my client, mm. I would be advising you to pop a reserve price on it to protect it, and that reserve price would be three thousand pounds. <coughs> Pardon? <laughs> three thousand pounds. Three, three thousand. Three thousand pounds. Seriously? Absolutely, absolutely. Would you advise Geraldine if it doesn't get to that? Yeah, to, to I mean, keep it's, it. It's Geraldine's decision at the end of the day. To be honest, if you don't get bid. 2005, 2007, somewhere around there, then think long and hard before making a decision. What were you expecting? I thought I'd be lucky to get £160. <laughs> so when you said that figure, Simon, <laughs> wow! <laughs> Thank you so much for bringing this in. I've loved it's it. It's a real treat. Thank you very and much. And good luck there, and stick to your guns. I will do. OK, good luck. So now it's over to the dealers, yes. isn't it? Yes. We just don't know what's going to come through, do we? And then this pops up. I'm absolutely over the moon that my little mirror is worth so much money. Simon pointed out not to be tempted to sell it for less than it's actually worth. Hello. 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 That looks very lovely. I like the look of that. So what's your name? My name's Geraldine. Hello, lovely Geraldine. To meet Hello you. Geraldine. And Hello. lovely to meet you all. Where did you get this from? This has come down through uh, three generations of the family. Oh, wow. Right. And was it purchased in a different country or did it get imported? I, I was going to let uh, Tash have a look to right. see if she okay. uh, could find out. Oh, it does look very oriental. It's beautiful. It's got, like, um, lotus flowers kind of engraved on this and leaves and what is is that part of a dragon's head and let's turn it over and yes a little vanity mirror 
And it looks like it's in brass as well. That's really pretty. Geraldine, do you use it? Does it live on your dressing table? I'm ashamed to say it's been gathering dust on a dressing table for the last, uh, well, three and a half years. Geraldine, this is quite a special little mirror, isn't it? The quality is just bang on, isn't it? What did Simon have to say about it? Well, why don't we ask him ourselves? Oh, oh, here he is. Oh, hello, hello, the hello. The great man. Lee. Uh, do you know what? I didn't even know Simon was real. No, <laughs> I didn't either. <laughs> I was just having a cup of tea. Oh, oh crikey. Oh. Well, anyway, welcome to the bidding room, Simon. Yes. <laughs> uh, I, I take it you've all had a chance to look at Geraldine's treasure. It's, it's an item we see very rarely at auction, to be honest. What you're looking at is a, is a Chinese jade hand mirror set in white metal, uh, dating from probably the late 1800s. It's one of those things when, when Geraldine sort of brought it into the valuation room, sort of myself and Nigel looked at each other and sort of the jaws dropped, you know, it was one of those moments, really. As the day job's an auctioneer, <laughs> I mean, we might as well kick off. What do you reckon? Gavel. What do you reckon? It's a travel gavel. It's been travel... Hey, well done. Are we going to get close enough? That's the... Uh... Well, that's the thing, isn't it? I mean, we'll, we'll, have, we'll, have a, we'll have a think when I start asking you for the opening oh. bid. The mirror's been valued at £3,000, much to Geraldine's surprise. With Simon keen to ensure she only sells at the right price, will any of the dealers be prepared to buy this very specialist piece? So then, we're, I mean, we're here today with lot 10 of our catalogue in our special oriental sale today, and I offer you this late 19th century Chinese jade hand mirror, and I will ask you for a starting bid of, what shall we say? at the low end of the estimate, at £800. The gentleman at the back there, I'm sure he winked at me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that was a nervous twitch, so I'm sure that was 850 I did miss what you started it at, Mr Auctioner. Well, 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 thank you for the hand. That's 850 <laughs> That's 850 we are on 850 Any advance on 850 I'm going to do what my dad told me to do at auctions as a kid and sit on yeah, my hands. Yeah. <laughs> do I see that magic four figures? Everyone's looking at each other instead of the auctioneer, Geraldine. It's not very, not very good, is it? Mr. Auctioneer, is this a really good buy? It's yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I don't know. You no no. In, in, in all in all seriousness, to be honest, this would grace any of the so-called top London auction houses. This would be in one of their special Oriental sales. Right. You know? Okay. So it is a piece, obviously, that we've got to protect. Geraldine's interests with. Yeah. Hence, um, hence Simon's presence. You know, yeah. Obviously, it's great for us all to see it here today. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I think she would probably get a better price by doing that, personally. Yeah, I think I would agree. Uh, Specialist sale. What are you hoping to get? If at all possible, 3,000. Oh, crikey. The silly part about this, you know as well as I do, if it did go in the right sale, it could fly. Can I just ask a quick question? How did you bring it here today? Did you shove it in a Wrapped handbag? Wrapped up in a little bit of tissue paper at the top of my <laughs> overnight bag. Okay, and how is it going home tonight? <laughs> Reverently. <laughs> Fantastic item, beautiful to see it. Well, it's been lovely to meet you all. You too, Geraldine. My Thank best you efforts. Very much. All right, thank you. Cheers, right. Geraldine. Thank you. No shoving it in the top of your suitcase on the way home. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye. Take you care. Later. Thank you. So, no sale for Geraldine, but she still goes home happy after the surprise discovery of just how much the mirror might be worth. Sadly, my item didn't sell, but I have got so much information to take away with me. Meeting Simon has been such a treat. The, uh, the whole experience has been fabulous and well worth the effort. I loved it. Last to arrive is Ivor with one of my favourite things. A mystery box he feels sure will intrigue the dealers. A lot of people saying things are antique and unique, they're not. This pretty much is. So anybody interested in it uh, will know they're getting something that nobody else has got. And in the collecting field, that's everything. Well, Simon, we do like a nice shiny <laughs> box, don't we? This one's wooden. It is. It is. Full of treasures, no doubt. Well, hopefully. Hopefully. Well, maybe we'll find out. We'll mm. ask Ivor. He'll know. <laughs> he will know. Well, Ivor, lovely to meet you. Tell me all about it. It is a man's personal campaign chest where he would have put his military items plus his personal items. So it would be things in there uh, like the red soap would be for washing him 
and the light-coloured soap would be for washing his clothing. So you, you acquired this? Yes. Did you have to pay for it? Yes. Yeah. How much did you, did you pay for it out of interest? I paid for the lot £250. Right. All of it. Yeah. But you decided to sell this box? Yes. Well, luckily, Simon is an expert in all things with boxes. Good. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, 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 it's fascinating to start with. I mean, we've got lots of goodies inside, which... Uh, which is always good, isn't it? First thing I was drawn to was a little uh, uh, brush here, polishing brush, uh, bone handle, of course, you know, sort of uh, rough and ready. What would that be Fancy. for brushing? I presume clothing or, or shoes or whatever, really. Right. OK. And then a folding uh, cutlery set. Yes, I've got one of those. <laughs> <Have you? Yes. laughs> for touring, <laughs> just in case Which... there's no cutlery. <laughs> a couple of books there as well. That's map reading, yeah. Oh, map Military reading. issue again. Another one there. We've got a selection of sort of little uh, button badges as well. And so a little secret drawer kind of thing in there. Oh, right. You need a secret drawer. You don't need a secret drawer. <laughs> it's not a box without a secret <laughs> yeah. drawer, is it? Yeah, absolutely not. Um, fascinating thing, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly happily, happy to say that it is from the Boer War period, probably, you know, 1900, 1901, something like that. Are they collectible? Oh, they are. I mean, the, 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 as, you know, as Ivan knows, I mean, the, the, the field of military collecting is, is huge, you know, and somebody would love to get their hands on this simply because it's so busy. So why don't you ask Simon the question you've been dying to ask him? So, Simon, in your opinion, what's it worth? As individual pieces, there's probably, you know, a few pounds here, a few pounds there, that kind of thing. As a complete unit, to be honest, if, if, if I had it in the, in the auction room, I'd happily have a pre-sale estimate of 180 to 220. That kind of bracket is where I see it at auction. But it's a one-off, so who knows? Are you happy with that value? Yeah, well, it's going to be up to me to big it up, isn't it? Yes, I think... I think yeah. And I think... Well, I'll... Having met you, Ivor, I think you're just the man to do that. <laughs> I will do my best. So, before you go into the bidding room, Ivor, um, we're just going to get uh, Simon to give you some bullet points to take in with you. Yeah, well, but bullet points for Ivor to take next door. Pine Box, as he knows, the Royal Engineers connection, Boer War, I think, probably, so 1900, 1901, that kind of date, and just, just push the collectability value of it. There you go. Well, best of luck. I'm sure you, you will do very well. <laughs> Great. Nice to meet you. Thank you very much. Simon's just told me that he thinks it's worth between about 180 to 220 pound. Uh, I'd like to push it a bit further. Uh, we'll see what I can do. Hello. Hi. Hello. 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 How are you? Splendid. Thank you. Yeah, Good. What's your name? Uh, my name's Ivor. I'm a man of Kent. Hello, Ivor. Kent. Kent. Wicked. Can you show us what's underneath this cloth? Yes, I can do. Oh. Love a box. Okay. Can I can I have a quick stab at this? I had a box. I might be totally wrong. The same as that once. And when you lift it up, there was a knife inside of it. And it was a salt chopper. It's not one of them, is it? Oh no. It's not no. got a blade inside. Okay. Just more thought... interesting than that. I... Oh, okay. I can't quite see the writing on the it's top. It's got uh, um, Mr. Shirley on it. Come on, Tash. Put us out of our misery and go and open the box. It's a beautiful box, though, isn't it? Oh, wow, it's got lots of things in here. Oh, OK. So it's, um, I see, like, soaps, brushes... Oh, toothbrush. It is, it is just um, a personal belongings, really, isn't it? Just, it is a campaign box. It carries all of the things that were personal to him. Uh, yeah. Parts of his military equipment, books and, uh... There's like a rifle cleaning kit, oh, personal wow. cleaning kit. You see all these bits separately, don't you? Now and again, but to get them all in the same in one box is. And they all belong to one yeah. person as well. I yeah. think it's brilliant. Well, it's like yeah. it's like unlocking somebody's life, isn't it? This is really. It's a treasure chest yeah. of and going a beautiful back box. A hundred years. Yeah. Really beautiful box. Yeah. But I've got to give you a bit of a, a bit of a, a bit of a, a heads up. Yeah. Right, so Ian will buy it and flip it for a tenner's profit. <laughs> Tash will split it all up and sell it all individually for pennies. Um, Estelle will paint it orange. <laughs> she probably will. Um, <laughs> James will go, well, I don't know what to do with this, um, and research it. And, you know, but I will love it, treasure it, and put it on my RAF base. So, can we please kick off the bidding? The campaign box, thought to date back to the Boer War, 
is valued at 180 to 220 pounds. With the battle lines drawn by AD, can Ivor top that figure? I'm going to kick it off with 100 quid. Strong. 120. 130. 150. 160. 170. I'm going to leave it to the guys to fight it out. <laughs> 180. Keep going. 190. You're a bit quiet, Ian. All right, well, let's crack on a little bit further then. £200. I'm going to be out because um, I would keep it together, but it's the time of research to go into it as well. I'm thinking 250 is my final bid. Well, you're getting close. James, so I'm going to say I'm out. You're close. What would you like for it? 275 would buy it. If you meet me halfway, I'll do that, but that would be it. 260. Yeah. Yeah. OK, well done. Wow, brilliant. Thank yeah. you. Well done. Yeah, it's a nice item. Yeah, I've managed to bid it up to £260, which goes towards, hopefully, me buying a military vehicle that I've got my eye on. Can you tell me, over how much Simon valued it at? He valued it at uh, 180 to 220 OK. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. Uh, had a great time coming into the bidding room and uh, happy with the result. So, James, what are you going to do with this, then? Um, I've already sold two bits to AD, two bits to Ian. <laughs> I love the brooch. <laughs> I do like that box as well.